So my computer monitor's playing up. It uh, won't come on. I'm having to press the switch a number of times. And then the light, the little green light there's flickering. And it just is taking too many attempts to switch it on. Flickering again. Ah, there it goes. Uh, that wasn't too bad, but uh, it has taken sort of two dozen attempts in the past. So I'm going to have a go at uh, fixing it by replacing electrolytic capacitors. So let's have a look inside. I uh, took the monitor apart a few days ago, a couple of weeks ago now, and um, had a look at what electrolytic capacitors are in there and uh, made a list of them and then I went on eBay to find a capacitor kit. And Here's the one I chose, and the reason I chose it is because uh, most of the values, all but one actually, of capacitor in the monitor were in this kit. So there's only one capacitor in there which I can't change, and that one looked alright. So, but I'm going to change everything else that's in there uh, and see if I can fix this monitor. So these come off just by levering them off. And then I need to undo these screws to get the stand off. And then underneath these plates there are some screws which uh, enable this cover to come off. So I'm just having a bit of a battle with these plastic tabs. You've got to accept that there's going to be a bit of collateral damage to the plastic casing but it's worth it for the uh, solution and then there's the inevitable wire which runs to in this case the speakers which is plugged up here with this plug so I'm going to take that out before the cover finally comes away. Okay, so inside we have a circuit board here with teeny tiny chips on it. There are some capacitors, electrolytics on this board, but they all look intact. The um, the little vents, which uh, if I get my screwdriver on the top of the capacitors. There's a sort of cross. Um, I'll get the uh, magnifying glass on this actually. So as I was saying, electrolytic capacitors have this cross on the top of them. Um, there, that cross. And that's a vent. Those um, lines are designed to weaken the end of the capacitor so that if pressure builds up inside it, it'll burst along those lines and uh, not explode. And if you look at these two here, um, this one's bulging, so pressure has built up in there, and this one has actually ruptured and there's this brown gungy stuff that's come out and dried, but the electrolyte inside electrolytic capacities is actually a liquid, and uh, that makes the component extremely weak, um, very subject to failure with heat. And I don't know whether you can see this, but this board has clearly got quite hot. It's um, light brown in places and very dark brown in others. So it's got hot. The capacitors have probably um, expanded, dried out in many cases probably. Um, certainly they're all candidates for uh, replacement. But the one I'm focusing on um, is this one up here, because it seems to be near the circuitry that drives the backlight. It's probably a fluorescent backlight and there are four wires or four connectors here, here. There's an inductor here and connectors here and this is obviously the backlight circuit. This capacitor here is also another candidate so I'm looking to replace all of these really um, just to do a belt and braces job on this. But because these ones over here are also 
clearly ruptured, I'm going to replace these as well. I'm not going to worry about the ones on the uh, the computer board, the sort of clever board, because um, they don't look like they've had any problems, and certainly that board doesn't get hot, so they're probably uh, still okay. So let's change all the capacitors on this board and then see where we are. So that's the board taken out of the monitor and it's on my bench now and I'm going to start replacing electrolytic capacitors starting with the ones that are obviously damaged. So this first one is 470 microfarads at 50 volts and you might just be able to see it's not very easy to see but on the end it has um, bowed out, it's expanded so I'll take that one out and here's the replacement 470 at 50 volts uh, we've just got to watch the plus and minus because these are polarised devices so we've got to make sure we put it in the right way around so I've identified where the component is and I'm now going to use a solder sucker to um, get rid of the solder around the joint and that's this one here so, and this one, that one's gone. I'll try this one again. That one's probably gone enough. Okay, let's try and get that capacitor out. So the old capacitor is out, and there's a new one in place. I'm just uh, using a bit of blue tack. It's actually a white version of blue tack to hold the components in place uh, while I flip it over and solder the wires where are they? there, there on the back uh, to hold it in to connect it to the circuit as I say it's very important to uh, make sure you get the positive and negative the right way around so you don't have exploding capacitors now the two capacitors that were here um, they're, they're in parallel, you can see that from the tracks underneath and the old ones are 1000 microfarad at 16 volts and in the kit I've got 1000 microfarad at 16 volts but I've also got 1000 at 25 and it's just a bigger, although no bigger than the original 1000 at 16s the 1000 at 25 is just bigger, more solid, has a bigger overhead um, for survival so I'm actually going to use the 1000 mic at 25. OK, so there are the two new 1000 mic at 25. Uh, once again, being very careful to check polarity. There's always a negative indicator on these caps. Uh, they more than likely will explode if you put them in the wrong way around. So you must get that right. So that's all the capacitors that had very obvious bulging on them uh, replaced. Uh, this one here, this one here, and the two here on the 5 volts uh, in parallel. There's one here, 680 at 16, which I don't have, but it's not showing any signs of bulging, so I'm going to leave that. There's a great big one here. Um, I think there's a high voltage one on the main side. I'm not going to touch that one either. Um, let's put it back in the monitor and see if it works. So, having absolutely no faith in my ability to fix this monitor I've uh, decided to plug it in uh, before putting the cover back on but uh, fortunately it would appear from this corner that you can see the backlight has immediately fired up and I did just lift the monitor up and I can just see an image uh, so it does appear to have worked and I'm going to put the cover on now so the uh, moral of this story is that uh, electrolytic capacitors can be quite unreliable components, particularly if they've um, been subjected to high temperatures. And they uh, have a fairly good telltale indicator of whether they're faulty or not, in that they bulge and the uh, little cross line on the top end of the capacitor uh, can breach and the electrolyte can come out, so you'll often see uh, um, either a liquid or more generally you'll see where it's dried um, on the end of the capacitor you can see that the things fail basically uh, they're not massively expensive, the kit of capacitors cost about £6 something 
well worth it to fix this monitor. Um, okay, one more screw to go in. And uh, as I say, worth doing. Right, let's put the thing back on the bench and see what we've got. So, let's give it a go. Okay, let's try again. Wouldn't have dared do this before because I'd never got the thing to come back on. That does seem to be pretty reliable now. Good, monitor fixed. And just as a final confirmation um, to know that these capacitors are bad, you can see that if I touch them, they kind of rock. So that means the end has bulged out and they're definitely faulty. This one, actually, as it turns out, it's probably alright because it doesn't rock. And you can see the end there hasn't bulged out, but for the sake of a few pence, it wasn't worth leaving it in circuit, particularly as that one was in the area near the circuit that uh, powers up the uh, the backlight on the monitor. That's it.